Big billion dollar block boys worldwide. The low life, the low life. Welcome to my life. Black and white, you baby. <laughs> Like you keep it quiet, I'm bound and living it out life. Living it out life, I'm living it out life. You like to keep it quiet, I'm living it out life. Living it out life, I'm living it out life. You like to keep it quiet, I'm living it out life. Welcome to my life. It's such a fly life. Rip on my grustle, trying tryna stack my money. High life. Got so much game, baby. You should see my highlights. Watch out. Um here with uh the grand, grand, grand master, Mr. Virgil Fairley, who is the, uh, I would say, the most successful and the highest uh, moneymaker, one of the most uh, well-recognized and respected gentlemen in leisure to ever get in the game. And Virgil, it's a testament to you that you uh, have lasted this long. You say you've been in this particular game for how many years? It's 56 years. And uh, I think I was 10 years old when you started out, man. So that's a, that's a lifetime for most people. Yeah, well, tell you the truth, you know, uh, I started out this game when I was very, really, very really young, 1963. And I used to... Uh, I was in high school. I graduated in 1964. So what I used to do is watch the uh, big players ride down the street as I was in high school looking out the window. So that really kind of fascinated me because very seldom did you see a, a black man ride in a brand new Cadillac, dressing real sharp, wearing big diamonds. Uh, you know, looking like a, a celebrity right through the town. That was very something, something to see back during that time. Because uh, in all actuality, didn't nobody have food in the icebox. They walking, they have no cars, hot outside, no air conditioning. Uh, it was like being in poverty somewhat, you know. So that was real fascinating just to see these uh, two or three, maybe four at the most, doing all right in the town of Fresno, where I was raised at. Okay, okay. So Fresno was a working class, farming kind of a community. Wasn't no big city, right? It was an Albert culture town city. Okay. Okay. Cut braids, the pig cotton. Uh, they work at uh, gin factories. Uh, Restaurants and it actually was hard to even find a job to take care of people with their families at that time. So it was really hard for a lot of people. So you made a a, a gut shot, a gut call, and decided to change the way you thought about life in your direction. Were you an athlete? Were you a, anything like that in school? Or did you just work hard and try to get that job? No, actually, I played football in high school. I was the number one running fullback at the time. And, you know, it's a lot of nice things that I always wanted. My mother and father, you know, I was lucky to have a mother and father because a lot of my friends didn't have no mother and mother coming up to stay in projects or on welfare. Uh, they didn't even have food to eat. You know, uh, it was real rough for a lot of people in Fresno. So, uh, I wanted to give me a car, which actually I had a car, but I wanted something a little newer. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order for me to get the right type of automobile that I wanted, I had to get me a job. So uh, once I graduated, I went and got me a, took a test, and got me a job in order for my parents to co-sign for me to come. Because, you know, we was playing with the ladies at the time, nothing serious, you know. Uh, getting little welfare checks here and there, you know, that's as far as we was taking it at that point, but we still was getting getting our money, you know. Uh, we was apprentice in the game, we didn't know a whole lot about it because all we know what we seen riding through the streets at the time. So 
We just started getting so, a fresh start at the time, but we was getting our money just from welfare checks at that moment. So as you uh, got a little bit more experience, yeah. When you did you leave Fresno and go say to L.A. or San Francisco or in one of the bigger cities to get more women to to uh, increase your power and your, and your game plan? No, actually, this is what happened in, 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 to, to, in my behalf. I went and got one job. I started working. I took a test for another job because I was trying to enhance my lifestyle. You know, I used to ride across town to see all these white people living great, because I'm living on the west side, where mostly all the black state. No other black state on the other side when you east, north, whatever. Mm -hmm. All rich people lived out there. So I used to ride out there and just fascinate how it feel to live out there. So my mindset was always having something nice in life because I wasn't going to sell less for the best. And so I was always forking, fo fork, uh, fo focusing on having something really positive in life. So I went to both tests, got both jobs. In about two weeks, I was fired from both jobs. So I had just bought a, a convertible Cadillac at the time. So I ride down Fresno Street, which was a main street in the city. And I was just thinking, trying to figure out what I was going to do next. Kind of glad that they fired me because I really want to stick my feet off into the game. But, you know, they really was uh, kind of confused up and down which way I wanted to go with my life at the time. So the lights start blinking off and on. So I pull over. And this lady... Two ladies that I had, one lady I went to school with, one from out of Oakland. And she had to, because she ride with me, and I told her, yeah, come on. So whenever they jumped into the car, this one lady started looking at me. She liked me right off the top. So he's, he's fine. I like him. So the girl told you, you better get your money together. Go ahead and choose it. So she slipped me three, four hundred dollars, you know. So I am going to drop her off for this first time I ever seen her, you know. I went and dropped her off, don't get the rest of my dough. And uh, this guy pulled up that she was with, and uh, he jumped on her right there. And uh, wasn't nothing I could say, you know. Uh, I hadn't served nobody, nothing, you know. Really getting my feet wet in the game, still apprentice, you know. So I let it go. and. Uh, she got right back in the car and said, I'm with you. So that was one of my first ladies. So there's a protocol or a way that you choose a woman or a woman chooses you in the game? Well, back during this time, back in the 60s, it wasn't but a very few uh, sporting ladies and uh, very few max. So the proper uh, channel to know that you have a lady know she official with you is for her to bring, give you the money, and you let the man know the lady is not with you. But at that point when that happened, I had a chance to do anything because the lady didn't really know me. She just know she wanted to be with me, so she would have got the money and give it to me. But I had had a chance to serve him, yeah, so he got that out the way and she stayed with me, you know. And the beat went on from there. Now, how many women at one time have you had? 17 at one time. Was that still in Fresno area, or you, had you migrated to L.A. or New York? Or I was in Fresno at this time. Okay. This is, uh, in the 60s, I never was no one five deep, you know, in the 60s, but I was still young at the time. You know, still apprentice, but I was... Still, uh, found the pattern of what I had been seeing, you know, from time to time. You know, I'm flipping brand new cars every year. Mm -hmm. Every time I get a new lady, I buy a new car. Now, there are rules and regulations in this game or in this lifestyle that, you, that you've been leading. And you got a lot of guys that don't play fair. We call those haters. How much hate or 
division or jealousy have you experienced while working in this particular field? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, the more popular, the most successful that you are, you gonna, that's coming to territory. You know, you got a lot of guys that scream it, but they don't mean it, you know. But there's a, a story in particular that I was watching the movie, mm -hmm. and it talked about how some of your friends came to town. Mm -hmm. You were out on the road taking care of your business with, uh, in other places, but you left the key under the flower pot, and you left some money and stuff there. Made your house available, and and uh, you were always considered to be very fair, very sharing, and very caring and supportive of your fellow members of the gang and people in general. You have a reputation for being one of the best. Yo, you know, I always like to play fair. You know, I don't throw nobody no curve. I don't, I don't lie to them because I don't like to be lied to. You know, if I tell you I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. It's not uh, in my character to leave me hanging on nothing. You know, if I can do it or I cannot. I took care of a lot of players all the way back from the 60s all the way up to the day in life. I always took care of a lot of them, you know. But we all up on one end, brother. So that's why I don't know why they be bringing that sideways hate stuff into the game, because that's not part of it, you know. So uh, I'm always trying to look out when I can, you know. But we all have lumps and bumps on the merry-go-round out here. Every day ain't no good day, you know. We got to make it the, the best that we can, you know. We all up on the, the umbrella of, of what you call hustling. That means thinking from your mind and create and make things happen in life, you know. You got a lot of guys talking about, I just uh, do this and do that. Well, a lot of these guys, they're not being truthful because everybody knows everything about what all these, everybody have done. So me, I put it out there. I stay true to it. This is what it was. But I have never been without Anything. I stayed on this bicycle ever since 1963. The trail of success about this life was called the game, and that's what I'm sticking to. Well, you've been you've been called a triple OG, a triple grandmaster, the greatest, the uh, pinnacle of success, uh, the top dog. Uh, and from what I've seen, just by knowing you for the few years that I've known you, you're a stand-up guy. And that's all a man can ask for, is to be respected by his peers. Yeah. We understand that people hate because they're jealous. Mm -hmm. And I know you've experienced a lot of jealousy in your lifestyle. You know, uh, how so many people speak on, you know, big game that plays smooth out of sight. You know, you got to be on a certain level. Uh, to even reach the peak of what uh, 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 a guy that's really doing things, you have to you have to be on that level to even comprehend what's going on. And a lot of guys that's fifty, they still twenty in heart, so they haven't elevated into the next phase. And so they be angry with themselves. They can't be angry with me because I don't do nothing to nobody, mm -hmm. but do the things I like doing, have the things I like having. I don't try to. Hang with nobody to make myself look good. I ain't been on no program to make myself look good. Everything I did has come from the mind and the shoulders of this game. Well, I know that there are some things that you are doing and have been doing philanthropically, uh, helping the community, giveaways, and, and helping people around the holidays and things like that. And it takes a person that cares to do those type of things. And as, as I understand, you right now are planning to do some of those things in the future. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely, yeah. Go all the way back to whenever I had a, you know, Natalie Cole was with me back in 1976 before she even ever got to the point where she was. Uh, a lot of people in Fresno don't know about it, but I know the world is going to know about it. I'm just really just sharing this right now. Mm -hmm. She was with me back then, you know, and a lot of those artists didn't have a lot of money as time went on. When I become major, 
uh, into the life in 1971. I moved back to Los Angeles. That's where I was getting down at in Los Angeles. I moved back to Fresno. Uh, I helped a lot of those entertainers uh, be able to come to show. I worked Bobby Blue Band, a lot of more. Time on day, all of my book, I put them all the way across the country. I was still in my 20s at the time. And I hired a big staff. I helped all them out. So this been going on and on and on, you know. Uh, helped a lot of people. All the players across the country used to get bad shape, you know. And if the game go to jail, you know, I'd help them, you know. Make sure they don't lose their cars and all that. Because I had a, a, a gift from God, you know. My heart was good. A lot of people get me confused because they don't know me like that, you know. I keep my business to myself, you know, and uh, I don't pillow talk. Uh, I'll say what it is, you know, because I don't mind. Nowhere I, wherever I go, what I say once, I can say again, because I don't start never with nobody. I go to prison. I'm respected up in there because they know I, I do things in a man's way and I keep it that way. Respectful. I know you had your downfalls and your pitfalls and you served time and they took away all your major assets and things like that. Tell me a little bit about what you went through on that particular journey and how you overcame that. I had 20 years of success. In 1992, I'd done a friend of mine a favor. And the favor came down like an earthquake. It crumbled all on me. It took 20 cars. I had the Rolls Royce, Golden Spirit Zimmer, Mercedes. I had the Corvette and all of them was top flight, which I've been driving top flight cars for, for 20 years straight at this time. But this time I got 20 of them. And I had everything paid for and a million dollars for jewelry I used to wear. And they took all my minks, all five houses, all my furniture. And they were just trying to destroy me. And they was trying to give me a death sentence over nothing. Because of everything that come in, material things that they come and found. Uh, like the cars and the jewelry and furniture, you know. Uh, and... Uh, as I went to court, every DA, every lawyer in Sacramento come to see who this giant was. They stopped the Super Bowl to see who this giant was. They, the movie people came, the book people came to write movies, but I got a hell of a case and it happened just like that. And they tried to, uh, Put me in a position so I would never get back. But I had the desire, once they gave me 10 years, I give them five of it back. I had a desire to get back and become a winner that I am today. So I did the, give them the five. I come right back out. I'm right back at them. Taking care of my business, I got a beauty supply. I'm a legit business man buying real estate, doing all the right thing. They come right back, laid down on me, they took 50 more thousand from me. So I went through this transition, went to court, got through all that. So now they got me where I got to be way under. I don't even want my name out there. So if they say my name, they coming down. So I just laid back for about 10 years straight and just took it easy, you know. A little earlier about how you had several women. Was it nine or ten women when they when they sent you away to prison? I had and eight at the time. So all eight left because they thought I had a ten year sentence. I never told them when I was coming home. I just left it in limbo. So as during the process of the time, you know, I end up getting ready to come back home. I got 13 out of knocked off from prison. So I knew the race was on, the clock was ticking. Because now I'm older, I'm not young anymore. I got to try to get back in the saddle. 
and get my position back and start having my money again because life is more serious now than it was before I left. You know, it was a play thing before, but now it's a job. You got to stay on top of your business. You got to take this serious. Right. So that's what I did, you know. Uh, everything worked out fine. You know, I followed protocol, followed my pattern, planned my work and worked my plan, got right back in position. Now I'm a retired man. Now you associate your name uh, it maybe it not be as well known as some of the other guys. Right. I don't want to mention any names. Right. But there's a couple of guys in particular who you see on TV and movies and different things like that who have the reputation for being the uh, the the number one pimp or the number one ladies man, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Right. But as facts and figures and truth is known. Virgil Fairley, the great, 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 great grandmaster, has always been respected on a higher level than some of these guys who we see on TV and hear about in the news and whatnot because of your character and the way you handle your business. I don't take nothing away from the guys that, uh, that's been doing their thing because it's all a struggle with all of us, you know. They always is like a brotherhood thing, you know. Some is shaking them up a little better than others, you know. But if you put it on the scale and weigh it, it'll speak for itself, you know. I ain't going to say I'm better or whatever, you know. I'm just saying we all get out and some might uh, be satisfied where they're at. Me, skies and limit with me. So I keep on climbing. You are a author. You are a movie producer. You're doing things for the community, in the community. You've kind of come out of the shadows more mm -hmm. to be known as a man of substance and a man that can help other people achieve their goals too. That's always been a part of you, who you are as a man, because you've always helped your friends. Yeah, I'm a team player, you know, if they want to play, you know. Uh, I try to do the best I can to play fair, but fair don't never come back to you, you know, so you just got to keep pushing. All I can do is, is what I do. See, and a lot of time, a person can get their self tricked with the glamour and fool themselves like there might be God, but there's only one God, and that's the man upstairs, you know. I, they ask me, how do I stay on top so long and how do I get through everything I went through? I say, I've been true to the man upstairs. I've been praying every night since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. you know, I ain't never put God out of my life. I say, I'm, I'm, no, I'm nobody. I give all the glory to him. That's right. You know, and uh, just keep me on top. Keep me uh, going through this journey. You know, it's a jungle out here. You know, it's a fight. It's war, you know. And uh, you got to fight the battle in order to win the war, so... If you don't have no expertise or no 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 thinking power, uh, and uh, you know, don't try to elevate your life, it's not going to work. You know, I'm still climbing right now. And I'm 74 years old. And I'm still climbing right now as we speak. So you know, I always was smart in school, but I took my smartness from school and I turned it into the streets. You just be the opposite. People think they're smarter from the street turn it into the square thing. Now, I did my opposite. Now, do you have a lot of ch kids? Because a lot of times, people say players, pimps, whatever, have kids everywhere. I know you have at least one son, but I don't know. How many kids do you have? How big is your I kid? have eight kids, and I didn't raise all of them, took care of all of them from the streets, you know. Laying down in prison, when I had a house built from prison, you know. Uh, I done did everything on top shelf in a tight flight way all of my life. That's where I live. And that's the only thing I know. Now you uh, have a book or two? Got two books. And there's also a movie or two? I got a movie I just did a couple months ago called Familiar Liar. And uh, they called me in on it to... Uh, just sitting on the movie, and I got nothing called uh, 
a bounce team family time with Omar Goody. When they do the movie, I'm there, brother. Omar Goody's in Familiar Live, too. But I'm getting ready to do my own movie. Uh, matter of fact, they're coming down tomorrow to write the script on the movie and do uh, a couple other things. So get ready to crank that up. So I'm just trying to uh, just be all I can be. You know, the, top, the clock is ticking. <laughs> you know, so... I'm trying to knock it out of the ball, Paul, one more time. That's right, that's right, that's yeah. right. And in and, 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 and the big picture yeah. of your particular profession, there are a guy like Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. best basketball player who's ever set foot on the court. Mm -hmm. There's a guy like Willie Mays, right. best baseball player ever, ever put on a uniform. You got Floyd Mayweather, and you have a Virgil. OG Grandmaster, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Fairley, who sits on the throne. People may not know this, but in the game, by the guys who do what you do, you have so much respect and admiration from your peers. And that's important to me. I don't know how other people feel about that. Well, you know, if you don't know much, you can't do much, you know. You got to set a stand in your life and try to reach your goals. And that's all I do. You know, like I said, big game is plays food out of sight. When you run out of game, you run out of money. So you got to stay focused on your direction and keep winning and make it happen. It's easy for me because practice me. I don't know if it makes perfect or not, but it's been great for me. <laughs> I rock steady and I keep it going straight ahead, you know. So I'm doing better now than I did back then when they took everything. So they're going to show you the, the beat goes on and don't stop. You got a lot of people, man, that's never even had one new car in their life. God blessed me to ride every year for 56 years straight. Then when I got tired of having one, I got 20. <laughs> because what I like doing, see, I'm dedicated to this here. So I master this. I could help all my friends if I want to, because I got a gift. Nobody know I have. And I only share it with a very few. And the very few is the one that I see that's real, that's down with me. If you're down with me, I'm going to be twice down with you. It's just how it goes. Well, my brother, uh, uh, anything else in particular that you want to touch on while we're talking? Because this is like a testimonial, mm -hmm. a fact-finding adventure, because we want to promote you with your movies, with your books, when everything else that you're doing, your philanthropic work in the community, we want people to know just how good a guy that Virgil Fairley, the great, great, great grandmaster is in the community and in life in general. So if there's anything else that you would like to say before we conclude the interview, feel free. You have the floor. Well, one thing I want to address, you know, like I love all my kids, you know, I didn't start out as a family man, but as I got older and grew I became a father to my kids, and I love all of them so much. They was even a little confused about me because uh, they didn't understand my movement. There's so much confusion in life coming up because you got this type of person, that type of person, that type of person feeding poison into your life. So as a kid growing up, you, you get uh, kind of confused. But my kids got a chance to really see me and know me who, who, who I am. My grandkids, I get a big birthday party. And they were so proud to be there because they got a chance for all of us to come together. We really get a chance to see what it is for real and all the confusion stuff. But I love all my kids, you know, and I, I'm glad I changed for the best. Not for the worst, but for the best. And I wanna, don't want to strike out. I want to keep hitting mine over the ballpark, you know. And all the, uh, the guys that's out there that have something so bad to say about the next person, that's not good. Because you don't have to down nobody and make yourself look good. Actually, that makes you look bad. Because the people are not going to tell you, but you're making a fool out like yourself. So let's just try to stick together. And uh, let's make a run for it, make it happen. It's all good. I love everybody. So I have to share. One love. We want to thank you so much for showing up. Yeah. 
for giving us this time, for making this a successful interview. And, and my man, I just want to tell you this. Uh, I believe in you. I know that the people that see and hear this will believe in you. And that Virgil Fairley, Grandmaster, is not done yet. And I don't play big on me and little on you. You know what I'm saying? Man upstairs is in charge of all of us. So don't worry about that. It's all good. Dr. Love signing off. Thank you very much. God bless.